This is Political Forum for Wednesday, March 19th. Uh, we welcome today as our special guest, Alderman John Pope from Chicago's 10th Ward. Welcome back to Political Forum. Thank you. Appreciate being here. I'm Rod Joy, a board member here at Can TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive call-in program that's designed to connect you uh, directly with your elected official. Uh, over the next 25 minutes or so, we hope you'll have an opportunity to learn more about Alderman Pope. Uh, his views on some of the most pressing challenges and opportunities facing Chicago. Uh, above all, uh, this program is about uh, promoting a, a culture of strong civic engagement in Chicago. Uh, your voice is a key component uh, to political forum. Uh, we invite your questions and your comments for Alderman Pope uh, by calling us at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman, I know you've been on the program before, uh, but for viewers who may be meeting you for the first time today, um, say a few words about Chicago's 10th Ward. Well, geographically, the 10th Ward is located on the far southeast side of the city. It borders uh, the Indiana-Illinois border, uh, the suburbs of Burnham, and the Bishop Ford is generally the main boundary on the west. Uh, most people know it as they take the Skyway uh, into Michigan and Indiana. It's the home of former steel mills and the farthest ward on the city of Chicago, and it's the farthest uh, ward that is located in the southeast side in the city of Chicago. And uh, coincidentally, the largest ward geographically in our city. Terrific. We had a uh, primary election uh, here in Illinois yesterday, and I think we set records for <laughs> uh, low vo voter turnout. I think um, lowest voter turnout in Cook County yeah. ever. Uh, and I think only 16% turnout in Chicago. What was turnout like in the 10th Ward? Very similar, and uh, we weren't necessarily surprised. We thought that was going to be the case. It was predicted. We saw that with our early voting that our numbers were down significantly, um, so we assumed that would carry over, and hopefully everyone's saving up their energy to come out and vote uh, very vigorously in November. Uh, what we have been trying to push is for people to come out to vote, and especially our younger folks. We tried to encourage the teenage group, the 17-year-olds, who had the ability to vote this year uh, before they were 18 based on some recent law changes. And I saw a lot of those high school students at the polling places working and encouraging as many of them as possible to vote and vote at an early age and continue on throughout their lives. Speaking of setting records, <laughs> uh, I know you're a lifelong Chicago, and this has been a record-setting winter. It's been brutal. Um, it takes me back to 1979. Yes. Uh, but how have uh, your constituents uh, held up uh, this winter, and how have uh, city services responded to the snow and, and cold temps? Well, Mother Nature is in charge this year, and she really uh, flexed her muscles and showed how dominant she could be. And like any area throughout the Midwest, we've got our share of potholes. But uh, we've been communicating with our staff, and I, I want to commend the Streets and Sand crew and CDOT folks were doing a heck of a job. This was record-setting snow and cold temperatures, and I thought they did a great job. We received a lot of compliments about their efforts, um, and we are stepping up our pothole efforts. I know I've been informing my constituents that as of March 1, we brought on additional pothole crews. They are now working 27 uh, days a week. Uh, these crews were normally brought on in April, but they were brought on a month earlier to address the major issues. Uh, the mayor announced last week an additional $22 million for arterial street resurfacing, and that's what we're going to have to look at is really refocusing and reprioritizing where our infrastructure dollars go. And on a local level, uh, my staff and I have said we probably are going to have to look at uh, leaving some of the sidewalks as a secondary priority and look at spending more money on street resurfacing and pothole repairs. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite your questions and comments for Alderman John Pope from Chicago's 10th Ward. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes. Y your question, your comment? Uh, my question to you, Alderman, is I know that there's a new um, senior center going up in the 10th Ward. Could you tell me if it's actually going to be income-based um, which would be subsidized by Medicaid, or if it's self-pay, and also what is the occupancy of the building? Now, you had mentioned that we talked uh, an issue of senior housing, and actually uh, we have senior housing throughout the ward, and in the Hegwish community we have a senior housing, in South Chicago, in South Daring, and our newest senior project is coming in the Jeffrey Manor neighborhood. This is a Catholic Charities-based uh, development. It should be opening in the fall of this year, so we're very excited about that. Porticelli, as you can see on the screen, it's 86 units of income-based housing, uh, $14 million through a variety of sources. 
And the great thing about this senior project, any of, of them, is that it keeps the seniors in the neighborhood. Uh, I know having a mother who's a senior that she wants to stay in the neighborhood that she's spent so many years. She's familiar with her neighbors, the restaurants, grocery stores, and their church, her church. Seniors tend to be, feel comfortable and don't want to move. This allows those seniors to move into a setting that's more affordable or uh, more easily able to maintain. Um, especially during this cold winter, I can't foresee too many seniors shoveling snow day after day or maintaining a house with three bedrooms in a basement when uh, no one's home at anymore. So this is an income-based 86-unit Catholic Charities uh, facility that's on 99th Street in the Jeffrey Manor neighborhood, right next to Our Lady Gate of Heaven. We look forward to it opening in August of this year. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, hi. Good afternoon. Um, good, good afternoon. I just wanted to comment on the great work that you are doing to clean up the neighborhood by getting rid of all the uh, graffiti and also for the demolishments of the vacant buildings. Okay. I just wanted to comment on that great work that, that you're trying to do to clean up the neighborhood. Well, thank you, and I won't take credit by myself, but uh, we encourage everyone to call 311. Actually, we developed a policy about two years ago, my office staff, on Monday mornings, uh, we divide up and go into different neighborhoods and survey the business districts, the schools, the churches, and we look for graffiti, because unfortunately, the weekends are the time when people uh, flex their graffiti skills. So on Monday, we try to identify all those, get them into the system so they can be removed. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, demolishing buildings, some people don't think that's the right thing to do, but these uh, abandoned buildings pose hazards to the community. And with this uh, crazy market, the number of foreclosures we've had over the, uh, the recent years, demolishing buildings oftentimes is the best avenue. Some people want to save them, given the glut of properties that are available. Generally, it doesn't make sense, and these buildings can oftentimes lead to criminal activity. So instead of flexing your graffiti skills, tonight <laughs> we want you to flex your activism muscles by calling in with yes. your questions and comments for Alderman John Pope. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi. Yes. Thank you for taking my call, Alderman. Yes. Um, I had a question in terms of pension reform in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, now that Illinois the state has made its move, yeah. I kind of wanted to get an update on what's going on at the city level, and I'm also curious to know if the new push for a higher minimum wage sort of in tandem with pension reform will be effective in your view in the city. Two softball questions. Yeah. Well, I am supporting the increase in the minimum wage. Uh, we need people to be able to make a, a decent amount of money, and even at an in increased minimum wage, it doesn't give working families the type of money they would need to uh, sustain themselves as most would like. As far as pension reform, I know Mayor Emanuel has been at the forefront. We've been trying to work with Springfield to have reform. And as a longtime city employee, I, I look forward to a pension, but I realize there's got to be some give and take. Um, as far as the pension, we're looking at maybe eliminating or reducing the COLA, uh, possibly retire, increasing the retirement age, looking at cutting benefits. Uh, those are all things that have to be taken into account. And unfortunately, it's a reality, I believe, because uh, among other things, people are living longer. And that's a good thing, but we need to adjust our our tables to be able to properly uh, pay those individuals during their retirement years. And you spent uh, several years working in the Office of uh, Budget and Management, so you have a uh, keen insight on the uh, fiscal challenges facing Chicago. Uh, keen? I, I don't know about that, but yes, I'm familiar with some of the financial challenges, and it's a balancing act all the time. Um, on, on the citywide level, on the local level, um, we have all these priorities like street resurfacing, well, if we spend more money on street resurfacing, something else usually has to suffer. In this case, we'll probably do less sidewalks and curbs and gutters in the 10th Ward because the priority are the streets. Uh, you mentioned infrastructure projects and street resurfacing. Mm -hmm. I know you've also uh, been very active around some water projects mm -hmm. in the, the 10th Ward. Maybe you could say a few words about those improvements. Sure. Uh, just as the streets have been hard hit by this past winter, the city's infrastructure, the water and sewer lines, the, uh, the street lights, they're all aging. We have a significant amount of water and sewer lines, um, over 300,000 lights in the city, and it's difficult, it's costly, almost impossible to maintain them as well as we would like. But we've spent a lot of time and effort in trying to improve our infrastructure, the Department of Water Management, along with the city taxpayers by paying an increased uh, water fee have allowed the city to increase the number of water and sewer mains that they've fixed throughout the year. Uh, last year we had more than $25 million of water and sewer improvements in the ward, and those are essential to not just increasing the reliability of those systems, but um, it puts people to work. It avoids the basements becoming flooded and backed up with sewage, which unfortunately too many people experience. Uh, and it allows for the streets to be improved, just the simple resurfacing of a street after a project. So we're seeing some benefits and 
we've encouraged people to be patient during the construction. I know the noise, the dust, uh, the parking restrictions are difficult to deal with, but the end product, product is well worth it. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Our guest tonight is Alderman John Pope from the 10th Ward. Uh, we invite your questions and your comments for Alderman Pope. Uh, you can join the conversation at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman Pope, I know you've been very active uh, with black clubs and neighborhood organizations uh, in your ward. Uh, do you want to say a few words about any upcoming activities or events related to block clubs and community organizations? Of course, and some aren't thinking about block clubs at this time of the year when it's still frigid out. But uh, because of the cold winter, people have been uh, inside quite a bit. But before you know it, actually tomorrow is the first day of spring, I believe, or two days from now. And um, with the spring, <laughs> I, can't, yeah. I can't feel it in the air yet. But uh, we're trying to encourage folks to uh, get block clubs together, get them organized. Uh, there's always a need for additional services. People always want more police, as do I. But short of that, the best eyes and ears in any community are its citizens, are its residents. And people who are at home uh, can serve as the best eyes and ears in the community, and they can start a block club. This allows neighbors to know each other. It allows us to get back to the olden days when everyone did know each other, when they could keep their doors unlocked. Uh, block parties in the summer are always popular. Um, so what better way to start that process by then coming to our block club organizing meeting on Saturday, April 5th at the Eastside Vote Act Library on 106th Street. Uh, the police department, the 4th District, who does a great job on the southeast side, uh, my office, Inclusion Associates, all of whom have experience with block clubs and organizing, are sponsoring this, and we hope to get as many people out there to learn how to form a block club, or if you have one already, how to improve it. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi. Um, I know that you're pretty involved with trying to bring the Obama Presidential Library to Chicago. I was just kind of wondering what the status is with that. And can you explain a little bit, too, like, isn't there a broader effort to develop the area where, where the proposed site is and kind of go into that? One city, one plan. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the uh, former U.S. Steel site, the Lakeside site, which is shared by myself and Alderman Holmes of the 7th Ward. It's almost a 600-acre lakefront parcel. And uh, that site once served uh, as the steel-making capital in the Midwest and employed some 20,000 people in its heyday. But those days are gone. Uh, the property is cleaned up and ripe for development. We just opened the new South Lakeshore Drive on the site, which is a, a beautiful opportunity to see a wonderful opportunity. And yes, we hope, uh, myself, Alderman Holmes, and hundreds of others to bring the Presidential Library, the Obama Library, to the southeast side. I think it makes sense. It's a, a vast piece of property that would be extremely benefited from that injection of a Presidential Library, which draws so much interest in visitors. It's appropriate because the President, former Senator from the area, uh, once served in this neighborhood and uh, actually served employees and people who lived in the neighborhood. Uh, it really makes sense. It's kind of an extension of the neighbor or the museum campus setting. Uh, downtown you have the planetarium, a little further south the Museum of Science and Industry, and a little further south can be the Presidential Library. And I know some other uh, areas in the city are looking for it, but if you look at this site, this is probably the area that is most in need of that kind of injection, that infusion of vitality, and an area that needs it the most and that could benefit the most and is a, a palette ready to accept that. And an Obama a library and museum would be yet another uh, asset to draw tourists from across the globe to Chicago. Exactly. You know, the mayor uh, has signaled his desire that there be one, uh, one united day. plan yeah. for Chicago. Can, can you say a few words about how that effort is unfolding? Well, I think that makes sense. Um, certainly there's a, a lot of folks in different areas of the city who would like to have that. And I, uh, being somewhat subjective, will say that I think the Lakeside site makes the most sense based on what I just said. Not just because I'm from the area, but other sites seem to have to clear some existing properties to make room for this, already have um, sustainability and are doing all right. Uh, this, again, would be uh, the biggest injection in the area and would produce the most benefit. Um, so we're submitting information to the mayor. I know the uh, development team and Alderman Holmes and I have said that uh, we want this. Uh, the mayor is aware of it, too, and we have to examine what makes sense because it's not just a Chicago bid. It's a nationwide bid. Several years ago, I know Honolulu um, passed a resolution in Hawaii to uh, become the home of this museum library. So uh, everyone across the nation has interest in it. 
Uh, I know you mentioned the uh, upcoming meeting around black clubs on April 5th. I mm -hmm. think you also have a, another uh, big event in the ward on April 26th, and that's a, a community clean and green. And mm -hmm. maybe you could say a few words about that for our viewers. Yeah, this is the uh, citywide clean and green effort. And uh, every year, twice a year, actually, the uh, city of Chicago sponsors this uh, cleaning effort. It's intended to encourage residents and business owners to get out and do their spring cleaning. And with the winter being so severe, this is a, a welcomed event. We every year try to work with community organizations and schools to get kids out and, and neighbors to volunteer and clean up anything from vacant lots to areas around schools, maybe highly traveled streets that uh, are the repository of, of garbage as people throw their uh, material out the windows. So it's a chance for us to do some spring cleaning on a uh, wardwide basis. The Department of Streets and Sanitation provides assistance in terms of garbage collection, rakes, brooms, shovels, garbage bags. So it's really a community-wide and actually a city-wide event. And that's Saturday, April 26th. And where can Chicagoans, your constituents, go to, to learn more about that uh, clean and green event? They can go to my website, to my email address, our Facebook. Uh, it's all on the monitor there. And we meet at our office on the... 3522 East 106th Street. Uh, there we work with the, the volunteers to go out to the sites that we've identified. Uh, really a good time and usually we try to get together afterwards, have some sodas, maybe have a hamburger, things of that nature. Sodas and hamburgers <laughs> and clean and green. Yes. Uh, this is Political Forum, an interactive call-in program. Uh, please join the conversation. 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman Pope is ready for your questions and your comments. Uh, Alderman, I know one issue that you've been very active on is really a public health issue, uh, not just in your ward, but uh, in Chicago, and it's becoming increasingly a national issue, and, and that's this pet coke issue. Yes. Um, can you explain for people who might not be familiar with pet coke what it is and how you and others have been responding to, to this challenge? Sure. Well, pet coke and met coke and coal are all uh, products that are used in, in the industrial process and pet coke in particular is the byproduct of the refinery process. Uh, as fuels are made this is one of the the leftovers, the byproducts. Um, it has a, a use usually overseas in terms of fueling power plants. Um, this material has traditionally been stored and utilized up and down the Calumet River in the 10th Ward. It's been around for over a hundred years but recently a significant amount of it's come in since the improvements at the BP plant, the British Petroleum plant across the border in Whiting. Uh, unfortunately, the owners, operators of the sites that uh, have this material didn't take care in, in handling it properly. And as a result, the material is very lightweight, be can become airborne, and did just that. Uh, it's become airborne. Uh, people have complained about it getting into their lungs, complained about it getting into their backyards, onto their homes, uh, being dragged out onto the street. So uh, with the leadership of Mayor Emanuel and Alderman Burke, we've introduced ordinances and legislation to uh, protect our citizens by forcing businesses to take the appropriate measures to enclose that, uh, sprinkle it, um, all kind of measures, and um, probably the most it is the most aggressive and progressive throughout the entire United States. Uh, we introduced the ordinance a couple weeks ago, and we have a hearing on it coming up in April uh, to get testimony from the public, and we hope to have that passed in April uh, to force business owners to operate as good business owners. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes. Your question for Alderman Pope? The question is, uh, the process for vacant homes that are hazardous to our community as well as the eyesores hmm? to our visitors. So second call about uh, uh, property, property r removal, sure. eyesores. Uh, first thing is to call up 301, make sure you report it. Uh, the City of Chicago Department of Buildings has inspectors that go out and determine the status of that building. If it's vacant, if it's open, if it's structurally unsound, to get it in the proper process, usually the court process, uh, to try to get torn down right away. Unfortunately, it takes some time. The city has to legally identify the owner, give them notice, and bring them into the court system. The court system is clogged up. It's always uh, a challenge in terms of timeliness. Um, we identify properties all the time. We oftentimes call up owners through our own resources to find out if they truly have an interest in it, to force them to board it up. Uh, the police department has dedicated officers who scurry the area to look at buildings and ensure that they're in compliance. And if they identify new ones, get them into the court system. 
Our streets and sanitation ward superintendent also does that. Um, so there are quite a few. Uh, we know them. We try to get them demolished. And actually, uh, just yesterday, we demolished a building uh, that has been a, a hazard in the uh, Hegwish community. We've done several in South Chicago and uh, try to get these down as quickly as possible if they warrant demolition because otherwise they present a real uh, problem in the community, especially as it relates to crime. Well, let's talk about saving a building. Okay. And I, I think uh, you've been supportive of uh, the, the St. Uh, Florian School, which yeah. has uh, uh, over a 100-year history oh. in Chicago. Can you say a few words about yeah. uh, the school and uh, what's been happening lately with the school? Sure. St. Florian is a, a school that's in the Hegwish community on the far south side. Over 100 years in existence, and like other Catholic schools in the uh, archdiocese system, has its financial challenges. And I think in any community throughout the city, throughout the county and region, we've seen uh, the private schools, the Catholic schools close down. Um, maybe that's a compliment in some sense because kids are finding the CPS system uh, more rewarding. But these schools, and especially St. Florian, offer a great quality education. They serve as an anchor in the community. And the school was faced with a challenge of raising monies and putting together a plan that would allow them to be sustainable uh, for years to come. And, and my credit to the leadership there, everyone from the principal and pastors and teachers and, and students themselves got together, a very aggressive effort to raise money and, and put together a plan. And about two weeks ago, the, the school, the community heard that uh, we were successful in saving St. Florian. So it's a treasure that's going to stay in the community and, and serve the kids, hopefully for another hundred years. All right. Uh, I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes. Hello. 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 Your question. My name is Grace. Hi, Grace. Um, hello, Alderman Pope. How are you? Um, good. How are you? I'm okay. I, I just wanted to um, ask. I just finished taking um, my classes to get my master's in public policy. Good for you. Thank you. And I want to ask what um, or how can you encourage more of the people in the in the community to further their education into public policy? Because I've been seeing a decrease in um, students taking those courses anyways. Well, I, I would hope it's self-evident because every day in life there's challenges. In this day and age, you need to be aware of your, your surroundings and current events and getting involved, whether you want to be an elected official or you want to be a public servant, you want to work to improve your neighborhood understanding uh, the situations in your community and uh, developing techniques to address those are important. Um, everyone wants a better school system, everyone wants a safer neighborhood, everyone wants better parks. Those don't occur by happenstance. There's got to be a, a community strategic effort to make that happen and uh, people who get involved with that type of educational uh, arena are at a great advantage to change the way that we improve our neighborhoods um, and they have a great chance of entering the field of, of aldermen and politics if you choose that. Uh, I know you're a big football guy and one of the things <laughs> that I've read in the paper is uh, the possibility of adding additional seats to Soldier Field and uh, perhaps Chicago uh, hosting a Super Bowl someday. Uh, do you have views about uh, any expansion renovation of Soldier Field and uh, any hopes of Chicago hosting a Super Bowl? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, one, I think Soldier Field is a, a great venue. Uh, I am totally supportive of keeping the name Soldier Field. I know in past there was talks about having some sponsor uh, change the name of that. Soldier Field should continue to be named that. I'd love to have a Super Bowl. I don't know necessarily that uh, spending millions of dollars on improving that uh, stadium is the right thing to do at this point. Now, we have a great number of needs, not only in the 10th Ward, but throughout the uh, city. So I'm hesitant. I don't think it hurts to look at it, but at this point I'm not committed to spending money on uh, something that does not benefit the neighborhoods. We're about out of time. Uh, we'd like to thank Alderman John Pope uh, for joining us on Political Forum. Uh, we believe our democracy is at its best when people are informed and engaged. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for calling in. And we invite you to join us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman. Thank you.